So we make it a giant T-chart. Hopefully yours is less crooked than mine ended up there. But at the top of most T-charts in algebra, we have an X column and a Y column. There's rulers and boxes over there on the supply table. What page is this on? It is on the next blank page. We save the page, next blank page. So when we talk about x, y tables in algebra, especially when we're dealing with functions, there's some things that we assume you understand about those. Um, later, of course, we don't assume you know them now, otherwise I wouldn't be teaching it. But there's some of this you already do know. You know that we usually have an X column here and a Y column here, right? We also know that on a graph, what is in the X column goes on the X axis. And what goes in the Y column ends up on the Y axis or that these are XY pairs that we graph as XY pairs. This is what we know is the input, meaning that the Y column is what? The output. It's the output. You will now start a scene, a fancier version of names, where they call this the domain, and this the range. If they mention range, they mean Y. They mean output. If you see domain, they're talking input or X. Yeah, Jeremy? I one time tried to look up the origin, but it's been a really long time since I've looked it up, Jeremy, and I don't want to just speak from, but that would be an interesting thing to look up again. Um, kind of like why do we use M for slope? It never makes sense to me. I've looked it up and I've seen the reason, but it just doesn't stick. But we can look into that. I think it's an interesting question. This one does make sense to me though. This is the independent variable. which makes the y what? Dependent. It's going to be the dependent variable. I want you to think about some things that we've graphed. If we're graphing um, a cost of anything, how, whatever the total cost is depends on some other variable. So we might be um, doing gallons of gas or pounds of oranges or something like that. The pounds, the gallons would be the independent and the cost you pay depends on how much of the other you buy. That's what we mean by independent here and dependent here. And then there's going to be some other notations you'll see. In Algebra 1, we will still see x as x, but we start seeing some interesting things in function notation for y. We will see things like this. Who's seen this before? You may have even seen it like on the iReady test sometimes when it gives you really crazy things beyond your grade level. It's an F. This means the function of X. But for some reason, we don't always use F. Sometimes we use G. Sometimes we use H.
So underneath this xy chart, I want us to make a real quick example of what I mean by this. Put a line underneath there and let's put an example at the bottom. Can you zoom in on that? In our last unit on linear equations where we might have said y is equal to x plus 3 and then we might have made a table with the rule in the middle. I don't mean that we won't continue doing this, but the function of x over here, I'm going to show you how this is used like this table. So if I say that x is 2, this would become 2 plus 3 equals 5. If I said x is negative 1, negative 1 plus 3 would equal 2. We're using that table to show what we're inputting, what happens in the rule, and what the output is. A table can work really, really well, especially when you've got a whole bunch of inputs to put in. But this notation, what's called function notation, is often used when you're not doing a whole bunch of them. So instead of putting an xy table, you would say the function of x is equal to x plus 3. Notice my rule here is the same. It's how I've written the output that's different. And in a problem, you might be given, well, what if, you're, what if your x is 7? You would rewrite this as f of 7 is equal to 7 plus 3. We're basically saying when our x is 7, it equals 10. And we would write this as 7 comma 10 for our xy pair. Versus over here, we often didn't rewrite it. We just knew that this was 2 comma 5, negative 1 comma 2. What if I said, what is the function of x when you have a negative 1? This one here that I just wrote, is the exact same as this here. Same rule, same input, same output. It's just written in a different format. Wait a minute. Why is Oops, there a y? Because I just put this reverse. Ah, this happens when you're doing things quickly. Negative one comma two. Thank you. Is that what you're noticing? And I'm just going to use my mistake there to point out, for me as a visual person, I love the table. It's just cleaner and easier to read. But if you only have to do one or two numbers with a rule, this is a nice way to do it because you don't have to go through the work of making up a table. I would not have made that mistake of reversing my x and y in a table because it's so linear and clear. I just wrote these in the opposite way because this is the output and this is the input and I read them in reverse. It's just an easy mistake to make. Okay, so with that, we are gonna start getting into what is called function notation a little bit today um, by starting a Desmos.